All right, I want to do a uh, two-part video on the resurrection of Christ and uh, how we as members of his body uh, live in his resurrection and how we have access uh, to the life of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And this is a this is somewhat of a uh, uh, underestimated kind of a uh, forgotten uh, doctrine uh, in, in the body of Christ. And it's uh, not that people don't talk about the resurrection, but uh, they don't really talk about its application uh, to us as members of the body of Christ. And, and, you know, if we've been baptized into his death and his burial, then we are also in his resurrection, as Paul states in Colossians. And Paul uh, constantly talked about the resurrection of Christ. Uh, uh, Romans 5.10, he says, If when we were enemies we were reconciled to God by the death of his Son, much more, being now reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. Uh, Romans 6, 4, he says that as Christ was risen from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. Uh, he talks about uh, if the spirit that raised up Christ from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies. Uh, Ephesians 2, 6, he says that we have been raised up together with him and made to sit together in heavenly places in Christ. Uh, Colossians 3, 1, if ye be risen with Christ. And so Paul, Paul constantly talked about the resurrection. Uh, Galatians 2.20, I'm crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live, yet not I, uh, but Christ liveth in me. And so Paul uh, constantly talked about the resurrection uh, and its application to us as members of the body of Christ. He, he, uh, one of the things Paul suffered the loss of all things for was to know Christ and the power of his resurrection. One of his prayers for you as a member of the body of Christ is for your eyes to be open to know the exceeding greatness of his power uh, to us who believe, which he wrought in Christ. Uh, the power that God wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand and made him to be the head over all things to the church, that same power is now to us who believe that the power of Christ's resurrection, you now have access to all the fullness of Jesus Christ. And so I just want to do a video and talk about uh, uh, the resurrection and how we, as members of the body of Christ, are now uh, uh, baptized into that resurrection and how we now uh, live uh, through the life of Christ. Uh, Paul said in, in 2 Timothy 2, 8, where I want to start, he tells Timothy to remember that Jesus Christ of the seed of David was raised from the dead according. Now, here's the key to this passage. He says, according to my gospel. Uh, now, we know that Peter and the twelve preached the resurrection, uh, Acts chapter 1, Acts chapter 2, Acts chapter 3, but the way they preached the resurrection was according to prophecy. Uh, in the prophetic program, and, and what God had revealed in prophecy was that Christ was going to suffer. Uh, he went back to heaven to sit down at the right hand of the Father until his enemies be made his footstool, and then he returns at the second coming. But when Paul uses the phrase, my gospel, uh, Paul also preached it at the, the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ, but Paul received revelations uh, from Jesus Christ, as he says in Galatians 1, uh, 10 through 12 there, down, down through those verses, he talks about how uh, the gospel which he preached was not after man, for he neither received it of man, neither was he taught it, but by the revelation of Jesus Christ. And so Paul received revelations about the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ that had been kept secret and, and hid, uh, until they re were, uh, were revealed to Paul. And one of the specific things that was revealed to Paul was that when Christ went back to heaven and sat down on the right hand of the Father, uh, uh, he was not, not just waiting till his enemies be made his footstool, but that God was now taking Jew and Gentile and by one spirit baptizing them into the body of Christ, this new creature that God was making. Uh, in the heavenly places far above all principality and power of which Christ was the head and from that head we now receive all fullness and so when Paul talks about the uh, Jesus Christ being raised from the dead according to his gospel he's not just telling us to remember that Jesus Christ rose from the dead he's wanting us to remember the specifics the doctrines and the applications of the resurrection of Christ to us as members of his body found in Paul's gospel 
And, and so in this video, I want to uh, uh, talk about the resurrection of Christ, how it applies to the body of Christ. And I really want to talk about, about, about three things about the resurrection. Uh, the first video, we're going to talk about uh, uh, the first one, and then we'll do the other two in the, in the second video. But the, 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 the three things I want to point out about the resurrection of Christ is, number one, I want to talk about our position in his resurrection. Uh, I want to talk about, there's, there's two aspects to that. I want you, to, we, we first have to know the reality of our position in the resurrection of Christ, the, the reality of the doctrine. Uh, we have first got to be rooted and grounded in good doctrine. Uh, and then we have to, once the, the reality is, when you believe the gospel, you were baptized into the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ. Now that happens whether you ever come to know it and understand it, or, or whatever, when you heard the gospel, that was the reality. But but in or after we after we are baptized in the Christ, we've got to come to the realization of those facts for ourselves. Uh, we have to learn these things. Uh, uh, you can never live in the life of Christ until you first understand uh, the reality of your death in Christ and and your resurrection in Christ. How can you walk in that newness of life? Well, you first, when Paul writes that in Romans chapter 6, Paul's not telling them what to do. Uh, uh, he's telling them what to know. And so, uh, Romans 6, 3, he says, Know ye not, Romans 6, 6, knowing this, Romans 6, 9, knowing that. And then he tells them to reckon themselves to be dead indeed unto sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. There's the key, through Jesus Christ our Lord. And so, so I want to talk about the reality of our position in the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ, and the realization, that, that's, that's the key for us, is coming to the realization of those facts of what God has already done. You see, what the Christian life is, is it's us walking in the new identity that we have, being baptized into Christ. And as we learn who we are in Christ, then we can walk in that new identity. And so we have to know our position, the reality of it, and then come to the realization of these things for ourselves. The realization, the second thing that I want, want to point out about the first thing is our position in the resurrection of Christ. Then I want to talk about our present walk in the resurrection of Christ. Uh, you see, being a member of his body, we have access to the life of Christ now. Uh, uh, the same life that uh, uh, the man who rose from the dead and is now seated at the right hand of God, far above all principality and power, is now our head by which we receive all fullness. And so we, we can now walk in that newness of life through his resurrection. And so I want to talk about our present walk, but, but we cannot walk in the life of Christ until we come to the realization of it. And so we've, we've been baptized into his death, burial, and resurrection. We have to come to that realization, and then we can begin to walk in that newness of life. And then the third thing I want to talk about in the resurrection of Christ is our future hope, our future glory uh, in the resurrection of Christ. And so first off, I want to look at, at our position in the resurrection. You know, it's uh, uh, the realization of this reality, being risen in Christ. You will never overcome sin. Uh, as a member of the body of Christ, you will never overcome sin in your personal life until you understand these principles. And I, I, know, I know, you know, people, it's, it's not up to your willpower. It's not up to... Paul, when Paul addresses this issue in Romans 6, what, shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? Then he says, know ye not. That so many of us as we're baptized into Jesus Christ, we're baptized into his death. You see, he's, he's bringing them into the reality of their baptism into the body of Christ to show them uh, that they are dead to sin and now alive unto righteousness. And so these, these things are important. Uh, uh, you can never walk in Christ until you first receive the truth of what it is to be in Christ. Paul says, as you have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk ye in him. The Christian walk is nothing more than the obedience of faith that, 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 we, that, that is revealed to us about the truth of what it is to be in Christ. Uh, the whole Christian life is living uh, according to the obedience of faith. God says you're dead to sin. Well, you've got to come to that realization by faith. The Christian walk is, is, is us bringing our life into compliance with the truth of our position in Christ. 
uh, and Paul always does this, he first gives the doctrine and the positional truth and then tells you how to walk in accordance uh, to that truth. Uh, he said in Galatians 2.20 when he said, I am crucified with Christ. That's the reality. And he says, nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. That's the reality. And he says, in the life I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God. Mean, meaning that Paul lived his life in obedience uh, to the revealed doctrine of, of who he was in Christ, crucified and risen with him. And, and so we, we have to understand that, that these things are not, not just cute little things for us to learn. They're the essentials. Uh, if we ever hope to walk in that newness of life, we first have to be, have our minds brought to the reality of these truths. And so first off, we're going to look at the reality of our position. Now, Paul said in 1 Corinthians 12, 13, a, a verse that uh, few, few truly know. And the ones who do know don't really get into the depths of what this really means. Uh, Paul says, For by one Spirit are we all baptized into one body, whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether we be bond or free, and have all been made to drink into one Spirit. Now you see that word all. Now, regardless of whether a man knows and understands it or not, why did Paul asked the Romans, Know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death? You see, there are a lot of Christians that don't know that reality. And, and one of the reasons is, I mean, when you really consider this, 75% of Christianity, and that's a very, very conservative number, it's probably more than that, but the majority of, 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 of professing Christians in this world uh, associate the word baptism with water. That's what religion does. You see, Paul said in Colossians 2, 8, Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy, vain deceit. And watch this. After the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world. You see, baptism in religion is a tradition, and it surrounds the rudiments of this world, uh, water and things of that nature. Paul says, and not after Christ. You see, when you make your baptism into Christ, water Instead of by one spirit, you miss the reality of that true union to the Lord Jesus Christ. Water can never connect you uh, to a man that's now seated at the right hand of God. The only true access and union that you have to the Lord Jesus Christ, who is now seated at the right hand of the Father, is by one spirit. But see, the, the reality is, is most Christians don't understand the reality of their union to him. Uh, because religion has hijacked biblical words... And, 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 and the minds of men are so corrupted uh, from these great truths of the Word of God that they can never understand the reality of their union. Okay, And so when Paul makes this statement here, the, the, the major, even people who understand the baptism of the Spirit into the body of Christ, by one Spirit, are we all, notice that, all. It doesn't matter how carnal you are, how spiritual you are. Uh, everybody, uh, every member of the body of Christ is at varying levels of Christian maturity in Christ. But the reality is the most carnal babe in Christ and the greatest spiritual man in Christ have all been baptized into one body, all. Jew, Gentile, male or female. Every person that has believed the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, according to Ephesians 1.13, have all been baptized into the body of Christ, and they've all been made to drink into one spirit. Now, listen, when you truly sit and think about this, and these are, these are some of those truths in the Word of God that, that we uh, men uh, have a hard time trying to speak this, this great wisdom. And, and a lot of the times, man, we can speak and, and talk these things, but these things are going to have to become a reality in your own mind. These things can only be discerned spiritually, okay? As Paul said in 1 Corinthians, that the, that the natural man doesn't receive the things of the Spirit of God. They are foolishness unto him, neither can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. These are some of those things that you're going to have to come uh, to, to discern for yourself spiritually. Uh, but this union to Christ is the most is the most intimate to share in one spirit with somebody. To share right here in the mind the very thoughts, as Paul says, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. 
Who hath known the mind of the Lord that we may instruct him, but we have the mind of Christ, Paul said. I have not seen nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. Uh, 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 but he hath revealed them unto us by his Spirit. For the Spirit searcheth all things, yea, even the deep things of God. For what man knoweth the things of a man, save the spirit of man which is in him? Even so, the things of God knoweth no man, save the spirit of God which is in him. Do you realize how intimate that is? That God, by the Spirit, has given you access to his very thoughts, his very mind. Uh, there is not a greater... This is why Paul said, I've suffered the loss of it all. Why? That I may know him. This is a very real union that we have to the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, it, it, is, it is the most intimate and perfect and the most perfect union that you will ever know in heaven and earth uh, uh, to share in one spirit with the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, that spirit that is now in heaven, in Christ, is also in me down here. Uh, this is why we, we are said to be of one body. This physical body you now see, which is why Paul said to present it as a living sacrifice. He said in 1 Corinthians 6, 15, that our bodies are the members of Christ. Uh, through this union of the Spirit, my body right now, right here that you're looking at, has become a member uh, of the Lord Jesus Christ. And by the Spirit that's in me and the Spirit that's in him, I've, I have become bone of his bone and flesh of his flesh. And, but, this, but, but see, this union even goes beyond uh, uh, just me and the Lord Jesus Christ. We are members one of another. We've all been made to drink into that one spirit. He that is joined to the Lord is one spirit, 1 Corinthians 6, 17. And so every one of us that's been joined to the Lord Jesus Christ, we share one spirit, one with another. And, 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 and you see, you, you'll see this, uh, this. This is why division is such a horrible thing. Uh, amongst the members of the body of Christ and what causes division other than worldly wisdom. Uh, it's men not being submitted to the head of the body. If we are truly submitted to the spirit and the head of the body, the Lord Jesus Christ, and then, then we're all brought into that same mind, same judgment, all speaking the same thing that Paul talks about in 1 Corinthians 1.10. Uh, uh, you, you cannot find, you know, I talked to men in New Zealand. I've talked to men in Australia, uh, Brother Des Jennings. I've talked to people in the Netherlands. I've talked to people in Norway. I've talked to people in California, uh, uh, New York, uh, Ohio. I've, I've talked to, to people all around this country, people I've never met face-to-face, -face, people I've never met in the flesh. The first time I ever talked to them was when I talked to them on the phone. And there's a, a brother, Donnie Holt, down in North Carolina. I mean, David Osteen, you know, Pastor Rodney. We, I've talked to these men, Scott Ray. Y'all know who you are out there. I've talked to so many of you, Rob Bartels, and, and there's just this, you, you can see the evidence of that one spirit in the fact that we all have the same mind, the same judgment, speaking the same thing. That unity is real. And, and I want you to grasp the, the greatness of this union to the Lord Jesus Christ by one spirit and the reality of what that means. Uh, because the Christian life is learning to walk in our new identity, not in our old identity in Adam. That old man has been crucified. And you see, the old man had certain relationships to the world, to the law, to, to sin, to death. But now in Christ, we, we, we've, that old man's been crucified. We are something completely new, created in Christ Jesus. We are God's workmanship created in Christ. And this new man has all these different relationships. He has a new relationship to sin. Uh, Paul talks about this in Romans 6. He says, when you were, were the servants of sin, you were free from righteousness. But now being made free from sin, you become the servants of righteousness. Our whole relationship changed in Christ. But we have to learn these things. We have to learn the, re the, the, we have to come to the realization of the reality of who we are in Christ. And it's only when we come into that realization of that reality that we can begin to walk in that newness of life. And so the first thing I want you to know about our position in Christ, as Paul says, uh, that, that so many of us as we're baptized into Jesus Christ, we're baptized into his death, his death. And so, and so this is a question Paul's asking. He says, do you really not know 
Well, it, 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 is a sad, it is a sad state of affairs in Christianity that, yeah, 9 out of 10, maybe even more than that, 99 out of 100, who knows, that very few know the reality of what Paul just said. Because to them, baptism is water. And they can never understand how water truly baptized them into the death of Christ. But you see, by one spirit, when you understand that the spirit baptized me into the body of Christ, that that spirit is, is the same spirit that's now in the one who died, was buried, and rose again. And so now being made one with him, I'm literally uh, the reality. Now this, this is going to have to be discerned spiritually. You can't discern it with the flesh. But the reality is I have been baptized into the death of Christ. Paul said, knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him. Paul said in Galatians 2.20, I am crucified with Christ. It was a reality to Paul. Uh, uh, the second thing is he says, therefore we are. Notice them words, we are, not we're being, not we may be or we're trying to be. He says, we are buried with him, how? By baptism into death. That baptism crucified you and buried you with the Lord Jesus Christ. These are the realities. Paul's not, these are not conditional. Paul says, if you were baptized into Christ, you were baptized into his death and therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death. Why? That is Christ, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection. But you see, you cannot, and this is where the cross becomes so important, is, 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 you cannot live in the reality of the resurrection until you first uh, live in the reality of the cross. The cross means something. It means something to be crucified with Christ. And when you walk around like you're still under the law, you're walking in defiance of the cross. Now let that say, you are an enemy of the cross. As Paul stated in Philippians chapter 3, when you, Paul said, God forbid that I should glory saving the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom I am crucified unto the world and the world unto me. You see? This, this, the cross of Christ gave you a new relationship to the world. He gave you a new relationship to the law. You're dead to the law. Paul said, I'm dead to the law that I might live unto God. You see, you can't live unto God when you're still putting yourself under the law. And the only person that would put themselves under the law is a person who don't understand the cross. And so you're never going to be able to walk in newness of life. And you're never going to be able to, to, to live in the reality of the resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ until you first accept the reality of the cross. And that is, you are crucified with him that you might live with him. His death is your death so that his life can be your life. And so when he says walk in newness of life, he's not telling you to get up and do your best or try to be a better you. The newness of life that we now walk in is his life. If we've been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection. And I want you to understand the reality of your union to his resurrection. Uh, Paul said in Ephesians chapter 2, I want to actually read back in chapter 1, beginning in verse 19. One of the things Paul wants us, now remember we're talking about the realization. Uh, the realization of the doctrine is always the first step to, the, to, the, to actually being able to walk as the new creature. You can't, you can't neglect the doctrine and neglect sound Bible teaching and just go out here and make up your own standard of living right. You're not living your life. You're living the life of Christ. Uh, Paul says in uh, Ephesians 1.19, For us to know what is the exceeding greatness of his power to usward who believe, according to the working of his mighty power which he wrought in Christ, 
when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in the heavenly places, far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this world but also in that which is to come, and to put all things under his feet, and gave him to be the head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him that filleth all in all. So, so you see, God, God has created a new power in heaven. He's created a new head above all principality and power, and then he joins you to this head as members of his body so that of his fullness we could all receive. And so God has, you, you, God has called you into this new power in the heavenly places that is now above all principality and power. And he's given you access to the head of this body so that you could receive of all the fullness of Christ. And Paul, Paul points us out in Ephesians chapter 2 when, the, when he begins verse 1 by saying, And you, you see. So God has already done that. He's already set his son in the heavenly places and gave him to be the head of the body. And then he says, And you hath he quickened. You hath he given life. You have he, has he made alive. The first man, Adam, was made a living soul. The Lord Jesus Christ was made a quickening spirit. It is, the, it, is, it is the spirit that quickens us. Christ said that in John chapter 6. It is the spirit that quickeneth. The words that I speak, they are spirit, they are life. Christ is this quickening spirit now, and through his fullness and through his life, we have all are being made alive through him. And so when, when Paul's talking about the resurrection, he joins you to it. He says, and you hath he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins. Where in time past you walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. And we'll talk about some of these in, in the second video uh, about the, 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 the spirit up here in the mind and how, how we first got to be quickened and, and renewed in the mind before we can ever walk in this newness of life. But, but Paul's talking here about the course of this world and how we used to walk. And then he says, among whom also we all had our conversation. In times past, in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. But God, who is rich in mercy for his great love wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in sins, hath quickened us together with Christ, by grace ye are saved, and hath raised us up together, and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Have you come to realize that reality? Or are you still hoping you go get to heaven when you die? You see, the reality is you're dead, buried, raised with Christ, and are now seated in heavenly places in Jesus Christ right now. This is why Paul said, If ye be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above. How can I seek the things that are above where Christ sitteth at the right hand of God by one spirit? The spirit that is in me is also in Christ, seated at the right hand of the Father. And so I have access to those things by one spirit, but I can't, I can't find them with this man here. They've got to be sought by the inner man. And it's, that's the essential for you to get about, about our union to Christ by one spirit. And so the things I just read, though, about being baptized into his death, that's a reality. Did you hear the gospel? Did you hear that Jesus Christ died for your sins according to the scriptures? That he was buried and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures? Did you hear that gospel and trust in, in what that man did for you? Did you trust that for your salvation? If so, every male, female, Jew or Gentile that's ever heard that gospel and trusted in it has all been baptized into Christ. They're crucified with him, buried with him, risen with him, and now seated with him in heavenly places. That's the reality. But you have to come to the realization of it. You've got to get in the Bible you know, or, or, and get into a, a Bible-believing, teaching church that teaches the Word of God rightly divided, that teaches the resurrection according to Paul's gospel, that doesn't, you know, they don't teach the cross and then put you back under the law. That is complete contradiction. It is an absolute contradiction. Paul said, Christ is of no effect unto you. Whosoever of you are justified by the law, ye are fallen from grace. He said, I do not frustrate the grace of God. If righteousness came by the law, Christ is dead in vain. If there was a law that could have given life, then righteousness would have come by the law. 
The problem was there was not a single, the law of God was good, holy, just, it was perfect. It just could not quicken you. It could not make you alive. This is why the resurrection of Christ is so important, is so important. why the death of Christ is so important. But a man that preaches the cross and then puts you back under the law, he's, 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 he's contradicting uh, uh, the, very, the very cross of the Lord Jesus Christ. You see, these, we have to come into the realization of these doctrines concerning our union to Christ and his death, burial, and resurrection so that we can walk and live as, as new creatures in Christ. And so you've got to have your eyes open to it. Uh, uh, that's what Paul's talking about in Ephesians chapter 1. When you read Ephesians chapter 1, uh, Paul talks about how God hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. Now you see, people, people, people can't picture this stuff until they, uh, this is a present reality. You are blessed right now with all spiritual blessings. Where? In heavenly places in Christ. How do I access them? By one spirit. They're yours. And, and Paul, Paul is now beginning to reveal these things to Christians uh, uh, in the book of Ephesians. And he, man, I mean, he lays out some great truths in Ephesians 1 through 14, but he doesn't expound them too deeply. He lays them out in his prayer. Is that, is that the uh, uh, verse 17, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. You see, you are one with Christ. And through knowing him, through knowing him, you've already been baptized into him, but it's through knowing him, this knowledge of the Son of God, that these things become effectual. And these things become a reality to, to the point that Christ is formed in us and the mind of Christ is given unto, unto us that we can truly walk as members of his body. And, and it's, it, Paul, Paul's praying for the knowledge that the eyes of your understanding may be, the, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened that ye may know what is the hope of his calling and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints, what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us who believe. And so, and so Paul's praying that, that we would come to the realization of these three things. Uh, as, as now understanding, uh, when you come to Ephesians, you have to understand that, that, that Paul has progressed us from Romans to Ephesians to where we should now understand our union to his death, our death to the law, our death to sin, our death to the world. And now we, we are being brought here to the book of Ephesians to where we are going to be shown what we now have uh, in the life of Christ and, and where to seek these things and how to obtain these things and how to walk worthy of this calling. And so it, it is very essential. Uh, uh, Paul doesn't, it's, it's essential where Ephesians shows up in the list uh, because once you come to the book of Ephesians, Romans through Galatians should have already done its work. You know, I tell people all the time, the majority of, of saved people are going to die and go to heaven in a Corinthian or Galatian state of mind. Uh, they're never going to come to the point where they can, uh, they're going to die in that state of carnality to where, to where somebody like me speaking the hidden wisdom of God, it's just that they can't bear it. They can't see it. Sometimes it's foolishness to them because they're yet carnal. And so, and so it's important where Ephesians shows up. So you're going to have to first come to the realization of your union to his death. And then you'll begin to, to, to be able to understand and see your access and union to his life. And so you can't have the life of Christ without the death of Christ. Uh, Paul makes that very clear in Philippians. Uh, he said that he had suffered the loss of his own righteousness, circumcision, all of it, counted a big dung. Why? That I may win Christ. That's the prize. And then he says that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings. Watch this. Being made conformable unto his death, if by any means I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead. You can never attain unto that resurrection right now to have the true resurrection and life of Christ living in you until you're first made conformable unto his death. I'll let that set in. I mean that. And so, and so the, the great truth you must first realize before you can truly know the power of the resurrection of Christ 
is, is the first thing you got to realize is that you've been baptized into his death and that your old man is crucified. We're not simply talking about you trusting in his death for your justification. I'm thankful for that. I'm thankful that that is so easy. I mean, Paul covers that in three chapters in the book of Romans. You realize that? Romans chapter 3, verses 21, down through about Romans 5, 11. Uh, Paul covers the issue of justification freely by the grace of God through the redemption that is in Jesus Christ. And that God is now just and the justifier of him which believeth in Jesus. And, and it, it's through the cross and the redemptive work of Christ that God can now freely justify us and he himself remain just. I'm thankful for that. But we're not talking about you just simply trusting in the death of Christ to justify you. Uh, uh, we're talking about the aspects of Romans uh, 6, 6 through and verse 11 where Paul says, knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him. And then in verse 11, he says, reckon ye yourselves also to be dead indeed unto sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. To reckon it, to know it, okay? I know that I'm crucified. And then what? Reckon yourselves to be dead. That's the realization. You see, it, Romans chapter 6 is, is really... Uh, teaching you uh, what type of state of mind you should have where, rather than telling you what to do and go out here, go out here and do your best. Uh, Paul's telling you what kind of state of mind to have uh, as, as the reality of your death in Christ so that you can now walk in this newness of life. Okay, I hope you understand that. These, some of these things are deep and they're hard to explain. They're hard to put into words, uh, but they are very essential, and I mean that. So many Christians walk around and, and say, I just don't know how to live the Christian life. Well, that's the problem. You can't live the Christian life. It's Christ living in you. And until you accept his death, you can never live. That, and that, that's just the truth of it. Okay? And so we're talking, we're talking about the realization by faith. Uh, of Romans chapter, chapter uh, of, of the doctrines of Romans chapter 6 and other places about coming to the realization of your death. Let me give you some examples. I cannot be alive unto righteousness until I'm first dead to sin. As long as I'm alive unto sin, I'm dead to righteousness. Paul makes this very clear in Romans chapter 6. He's giving you some contrast. He says, when you were the servants of sin, you were free from righteousness. But now being made free from sin, you become the servants of righteousness. He said, he that is dead is freed from sin. That is not, that is not a, a statement of, 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 of experience. He's not telling you that if you're truly saved that you don't sin anymore. You're completely free from sin. He's telling you the positional truth of who you are in Christ. You're dead, and a dead man is freed from sin. Now, you've got, you've got the choice to accept that as reality or to, or to keep continuing on as if you're you're still in bondage to sin. You see, I get, you know, it's just, uh, <laughs> uh, somebody in bondage to sin has yet to realize who they are in Christ. You say, you don't ever sin? I don't have the trouble that I once did with it. It flares up from time to time. But I'm telling you, when you accept your death and the life of Christ becomes something real working in your life, if you think Romans 7:24, oh wretched man that I am, is the defining marks of a man in Christ, you don't know anything. And I'm, I'm, you know, I hate to get fired up on that, but I've heard that stuff my whole life. I use that as a crutch and an excuse uh, for years of my Christian life. The Christian life. Uh, uh, the, the, the experience of a man in Christ is not one of sin, despair, defeat, and death. I'm sorry. That's not our experience. Not when you accept that you've been crucified with Christ and now you're seated, risen and seated with him. When you come to that reality and you start seeking the things that God has freely given you in Christ by grace and those things start to work in your inner man, their business will pick up. And I mean it. Uh, but Romans 7.24 is not the banner that we are to hang over our heads. Oh, wretched man that I am. I fail daily and I despair and death is working in me. Nonsense. Uh, that, is a, that, is, that is a man who is still at enmity with God, who still sees sin working in him by the law. 
and he cannot perform. Okay? Good thing is, is it's not up to you to perform. This is what, this is, you're dead. How can you do anything? It's Christ that liveth in us. And if you think Christ in you cries out, O wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death, you don't know anything. Christ is already victorious. And you, 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 if you want that victory, then you're going to have to come to this life of the Lord Jesus Christ. And so you cannot, you cannot see and realize that you're alive unto righteousness until you first truly realize and believe that you're dead to sin through your union to Christ. You cannot live unto God until you are first dead to the law. Galatians 2.19, Paul said, I through the law am dead to the law that I might live unto God. And so how do I live unto God? I am crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. I live unto God through the life of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Okay, but I can never live unto God until I first understand that I'm dead to the law. And as I've already said, Romans 7, 24 is, is a man that's trying to perform, uh, uh, even a saved man. A new, a new man in Christ who goes back under the law. Paul said, he said, if I build again the things which I destroy, I make myself a transgressor. For I through the law am dead to the law that I might live unto God. You see, uh, it's only by going back and trying to perform under the law system through your own efforts rather than simply accepting the free gift of the righteousness of the life of Jesus Christ in you that you make yourself a transgressor. And you put yourself back under performance, and you're going to fall short. And you, you're, you're going to end up crying out, oh, wretched man that I am. But Jesus Christ isn't a wretch. Let that set in. Let the, just, just, just chew on it, digest it. You see, Paul didn't stop in Romans chapter 7, did he? He continued into Romans chapter 8 where he says, The law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus hath made me free from the law of sin and death. The law of the Spirit of life. The law couldn't give life. Could it? Galatians 3.21 But the law of the Spirit of life which is in Christ, I'm in Christ, and the law of the Spirit of that life that is in Christ has made me free from the law of sin and death. It's real. It works. Trust me, uh, the longer I'm at this and the more, the more that I get to know, the more that the Spirit of God renews and regenerates my inner man through this knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, in my, in my 20s and into my early 30s, I thought, what in the world is wrong with this old disgusting, filthy body I live in? There's nothing in it that desires holiness. There's nothing, and, and, and the flesh is still nothing to write home about. But what I'm telling you is, is that over time, as you grow and mature in your spiritual life in the Lord Jesus Christ, the more that, this, that the life of Christ fills you, the more you start thinking, it's as if this body's being put to death. This is exactly how Paul describes it in Romans chapter 8. He said, if Christ be in you, the body, of, the body is dead because of sin, but the spirit is life because of righteousness. You see, the body is dead because of sin, but the spirit is life because of righteousness. And he said, but if the spirit that raised up Christ from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelleth in you. Talking about this dead body of sin can be quickened and brought to life by the spirit that now dwells in us, which raised Jesus Christ from the dead. Meaning, this is what Paul means when he said, if by any means I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead. And so, and so it's, it's, it's talking, of Paul said, he said, if you through the Spirit do mortify the deeds of the body, ye shall live. Meaning that if, if the Spirit of, if we, if, if the work of the, if we will allow the work of the Spirit of God to put to death the deeds of our body, then we will truly live by the life of Christ. And it's, it's a real experience, folks, I'm telling you. It, it's real. 
And so I've, I've, battled, I've battled sin and I've battled my flesh just like all Christians do. I've battled carnality. Uh, the, the, the carnal mind is death. That's what you have to understand is that this, this great transformation doesn't take place by your efforts or by putting yourself under some type of ordinances and religious system. This life of Christ is experienced through the, through the regeneration and the renewing of our minds. Paul said to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. And we'll get into this as we get into the next video about our walk and how it begins with the renewing of the mind. But what I want you to understand is that it's got to begin in your mindset of understanding who you truly are in Christ. That is the first step before you ever get to the walk of, of, of walking in newness of life. You first have to be brought to the reality and the realization of who you are in Christ. You can never understand. I mean, you're, listen, until you realize you're dead to sin, you're never going to live unto righteousness. Until you understand uh, uh, that you're dead to the law, you can never live unto God. Paul said in Romans 7, 6, he says, he says, but now we are delivered from the law. Watch this. That being dead wherein we were held. You see, what, what did the law have dominion over? This right here, this man. The law hath dominion over a man so long as he liveth, Romans 7, 1. Or are you, are you alive or dead? Your old man's crucified, then guess what? The law has no more dominion over you. We are now delivered from the law, why? That being dead wherein we were held. You see, we're dead. And now this new man, is under a completely different law and system called the law of the spirit of life. And this is why Paul said, uh, this is why Paul said uh, that we should serve. We are delivered from the law, that being dead wherein we were held, that we should serve in newness of spirit and not in the oldness of the letter. The letter couldn't give life. But this, the, the newness of spirit gives us the life of Christ so that we can live unto God. You better, you better learn the difference of the oldness of the letter. The letter killeth. The spirit giveth life, Second Corinthians chapter 3. Are you sitting in a church that's just constantly tearing you down, condemning you, uh, and, and bringing you into a spirit of condemnation and death? God has not given you the spirit of bondage again to fear, but the spirit of adoption whereby we cry, Abba, Father. He has given you the spirit of his Son that you may partake in all the life and joy and love and peace and all the things that are now in his son. He's given you freely access by the Spirit. But if you want to sit in a church where they just tear you down, kill you, destroy you every Sunday, I'm sorry. And I'm, listen, man, I'll be the first one to tell you, I preach against sin. I preach against fornication. I preach against all those things. But the reality is for me to stand up and put you under a system of performance when I know you can't perform and never teach you how to live under grace and, and to live by the life of the, res of, of the resurrection life of the Lord Jesus Christ, and I'm, I'm not a true minister. And that's just it. You see, we cannot, we cannot live, walk in this newness of spirit until we understand that we're de delivered from the law. Another aspect, we're, we're talking about the realization of what it means. You need to study these things out for yourself. Of, of how do I now relate? That's what a relationship is. If, I, if I'm trying to live back here in a false relationship, if, 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 if I don't understand what my relationship is to the law, and I go back here thinking putting myself under the law is a good thing, and then I go back under that law, and all it does is destroy and kill me spiritually. You understand what I'm saying? If, if I do that, it's because I don't understand how what my relationship to the law is. But if I understand that I'm delivered from that and dead to that, that I might live unto God through the life of Christ and this newness of spirit, and then I learn how to live in this newness of spirit and how to live under grace... Then, then, then those things begin to work out in me. So it's important that you understand this, and I hope this is making sense. These, these things are always hard for me to communicate in words the way I understand them. Uh, but but uh, the third thing, understanding our death, 
is you will never seek things that are in heavenly places until you realize you were crucified unto the world and the world unto you. Uh, I mean, you, you look around at people, people talking about days of the week and diets and all these things. Listen, Paul said, if you be dead, he said, wherefore, if you be dead from the rudiments of the world, why as though living in the world are you subject to ordinances? Touch not, taste not, handle not. And then he says, if you be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth at the right hand of God. Set your affections on things above, not on the things of the earth. Why? For ye are dead, and your life is hid with Christ in God. If you're dead, and your life is hid with Christ in God, where should I be seeking that life? Well, it's not anywhere in this world. It's up there. Now, answer me this. Can this natural man find those things? Can this outward man, you're out here, you're out here searching religion. You're out here going church to church looking for the right religion. How do I know which one's right? How do I know which one's right? See, you're, you're looking for the truth in a world full of lies. And the only way you're ever going to find the life of Christ is by the Spirit of God being baptized into his body and then setting your affection on the life of Christ. The most important thing to you should be what it was to Paul, that I may know him. Christ liveth in me. And the only way you're going to find him and know him uh, uh, effectually and in your experience and to have his mind and to truly think like him and to know him and to understand all those things is by the renewing work of the Spirit of God in you. And so you're going to have to understand your crucifixion to the world. You're never going to understand your relationship to the heavenly places until you first understand your relationship to the world. You're never going to be able to walk in the Spirit until you first know that the flesh is crucified. Read Galatians 5, 16 through 20. I believe it's around verse 26. Paul said, They that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the lust and the affections. Now, does that mean that the flesh doesn't have any lusts? No. Paul said, Walk in the Spirit and you won't fulfill the lust of the flesh. But the, but the lust of the flesh, see, we have to come to this mindset that this thing is crucified. Why, why, how can we live any longer to this thing that is now crucified and dead? The Spirit is our life. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. You see? Positional fact leading to practical application. If we live in the Spirit, that is our position. Let us also walk in the Spirit. That is the application. And so I hope those things make sense. And, and once again, we're not talking about uh, the reality of your position. Every male, every male, female, uh, Jew and Gentile that's ever believed the gospel has been baptized into the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ and is now seated with him in heavenly places. That's salvation. You've been reconciled in one body back to God. Uh, but, but now we're talking about the reality of taking the realization of the reality of our position in Christ. And I don't know any, any easier way to say it, but to have the mind to understand who I now am, who I now am in Christ by faith, and then begin to walk as that new creature in Christ by, by denying uh, who I was in Adam denying ungodliness and worldly lust and to start seeking to know the life of Christ. Doesn't matter if I'm a Baptist, doesn't matter if I'm a Methodist, none of those things matter. In fact, Paul said in Philippians, and I'll close this first lesson out with this. Uh, Philippians chapter 3, Paul talks about them who walk. Uh, he says, for many walk. Now notice he's talking about the walk. Now, why not, I, Paul wouldn't talk about lost people in this manner. Uh, I believe Paul's talking about other professors or, or saved people who now walk as the enemies of the cross of Christ. In other words, 
Uh, Paul's not, I mean, read the chapter, man. People read this and they assume drunkards and harlots and drug addicts and all this stuff. Uh, Paul, in this chapter, he's talking about Christians who by their walk deny and contradict the very cross of Jesus Christ. Do you know when you put yourself back under the law, you're walking as an enemy of Christ, an enemy of the cross, not necessarily an enemy of Christ, but an enemy of his cross. In other words, you're walking in contradiction and defiance to the true work of the cross of Jesus Christ. You're walking in complete contradiction of it. If the cross was to crucify you, if the cross was to put you to death so that you could walk in newness of life, well, if you put yourself, if, if you continue in sin, or you put yourself under the law, or you put yourself under the earthly ordinances of the rudiments of this world, you're walking in contradiction to the fact that the cross of Christ is your death. You see, this is what Paul's saying. I mean, look at the context of Philippians chapter 3. You can back up to verse 5, look at the things Paul suffered the loss of. He talks about circumcision. You know, that, that is a... That is a a, a earthly ordinance, uh, uh, a sign, and all these things. It, it, today's equivalent could be something like baptism. People, people glory in sprinkling or immersion. I mean, you got wet. What does that have anything to do with the life of the Lord Jesus Christ? Please explain that to me. I mean, you, you people out there are so closed-minded and narrow-minded into spiritual things that we've been fighting a 2,000-year war about getting sprinkled or dunked in water. And I've talked to both sides of the aisle. Both sides are just as ignorant as a five-year-old when it comes to the spiritual things of God. Does it mean? I don't care. You need to get over that stuff. Paul said, Paul said, circumcise the eighth day. Was that a biblical command? You better believe it. What did Paul do? He suffered the loss of it. Even though you could find it in Scripture, Paul suffered the loss of it. He said, he said, of the stock of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of Hebrews, his genealogy, who he was, being of the stock of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of Hebrews, man. He says, as touching the law of Pharisee, that was his denominational standing. He was of the sect of the Pharisees. That's the denomination. He says, concerning zeal, persecuting the church, he was zealous. You see, zeal, zeal in a state of ignorance is deadly. If you you can have all the zeal in the world, you can go you can go to church and play the tambourine and the cymbals and get up and dance and turn flip flops and speak in tongues and and you know do all that stuff. If your zeal is not in, in accordance to the truth of the word of God, Paul said the Jews had zeal, but not according to knowledge, for they being ignorant of God's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness have not submitted themselves into the righteousness of God. Paul, had, Paul talked about his zeal. And then he talked about his own self-righteousness. He says, touching the righteousness which is in the law, blameless. I'm telling you right now that all you braggarts out there that sit and argue and fight about water baptism and, and what day of the week we're supposed to go to church on, I'm telling all of you something. Your battle ain't with me, okay? I've accepted who I was. And I've suffered the loss of all of it that I may know him because I know who he is. And in comparison to me, I don't stand a chance. And I'm willing to die. You see, the more I know him, the more my old man is literally being put to death. And I love it. I love every minute of it. My greatest enemy in this world was me. And the more I know him, the less of me there is. And I'm going to tell you something. You men out there who like to brag all the time and stuff like that, put yourself up against the Apostle Paul. He said, if any of you out there think you have whereof you might glory and trust in the flesh, I'm more. And what did he say? I count it all but dung that I may win Christ. 
and be found in him. He's not talking about being discovered in Christ. He's talking about that I might be erected, started, founded upon Jesus Christ, not having my own righteousness, which is of the law, but the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ. The life I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection being made conformable unto his death. You people out there, man, you'll never understand. Well, what if we're not under the law, what's going to make us live right? Boy, you've got little hope in the resurrection and the life of Christ, don't you? You've got more faith in your ability to perform and please God under the law than you have of Christ's resurrection and the life of Christ and its ability in you to make you into a new creature that is well-pleasing unto God. Think about it. Understand your union to his death that you might walk in the newness of life. And in the next video, we will talk about how, how that life is imparted to us by the Spirit of God to renew the mind that we might be transformed and walk in this newness of life. All right. Grace and peace. God bless.